we tryna live like, live like There's no consequences, quences They tell us how to live right, live right We get all defensive, offensive That's not the way that life works, life works Sorry to bust your bubble, bubble Every day that we don't change just leads to more and more trouble Good afternoon and welcome to the Wellness Report with Helen. I am your host, Helen, and I'm glad to be with you guys today. Today is all about change, which you'll notice with the background and all the flowers because I'm expecting it to be spring soon, and hopefully you are too. I'm so tired of this uh, changing weather, but it's Michigan, so we got to understand that. The thing that I want to talk about today is a very important subject, and which brings me the reason I'm eventually uh, next week you'll notice that the name of the show will change to Real Talk with Helen. And the reason for that is because I want to talk about everything, not just wellness, and um, I will definitely keep up with wellness, but there's so much going in our world today, so in order for us to cover it, I want to be able to talk about everything. So stay tuned for Real Talk with Helen, uh, and that will debut next week at Thursday. Um, and also stay tuned after us. We're going to uh, talk with attorneys, or us, uh, attorney Thomas Quartz. We'll be talking about personal injury, auto accidents, um, what to do in the event of a slip and fall, and things of that sort. But today I come to you with something I'm very passionate about. And this is about safety in our schools. I know that you've heard about the, it's been 17 school shootings this year. And we're still in February. So that just alarms me. Only uh, basically like 45 days into the year. Um, and we've had all of these school shootings. And it's just been crazy. You know, the, the massacre in uh, Florida where 17 children were killed, and well, it's not 17 children, but 17 individuals, some staff and students, and it's just, it's just appalling, and um, I want to know what we can do about this, and I know this is something that has to affect all of us, because most of our children are in school, um, you know, if it, regardless if it's uh, preschool or college, it's something that we need to figure out, so I've talked uh, to this uh, about this subject with other individuals. I've talked with friends uh, that are in the military. Most of my family are in law enforcement. I've kind of talked to everyone I know and gathered a lot of information that I like to share about you, but uh, share with you. But the main thing is that these situations keep occurring. Columbine uh, was in 99. It seems like it's just been on and on since then, you know, senseless. And uh, around that time, I remember, was when uh, Governor Engler had shut down all of uh, the mental health hospitals. And I think that that's linked with this as well, the mental health issues. It's a, definitely a mental health issue. It's definitely a gun issue. But it's not one or the other. It's a lot of different things. It's a lot of moving parts to this. So I want to break it apart and see what we can do. Because we shouldn't think because it was in Florida that it can't happen in Michigan. So um, I definitely want to talk about this because this young man, this uh, Nicholas Cruz, that uh, committed this horrific crime in Florida was 19. He had had the police called on him, a different incidents, 39 times. He had did YouTube videos expressing his anger and, and uh what he was going to do and that he was going to perform a school shooting. So there was a lot of red flags. So it's not just the fact that an 18 or 19 year old can get a uh, assault rifle. That's part of it. I believe if he was not able to get an assault rifle, if you want to do something like that, you'll find the way. So it's not totally about uh, guns because I do believe in my second amendment of right right to bear arms. I have that right. It, it it was given to me in the 1700s, and I think that it's something that I uphold. I, I believe that you do have the right to bear arms. However, I don't need an assault rifle. You know, if I'm protecting my family, I'm protect. I mean, a handgun, a do, maybe even a rifle, but I don't need an assault rifle to protect myself. So that is something that w that legislation needs to look at, look at, and see what we can come up with because it's definitely a problem. I was watching um, 
I, I believe it was uh, one of the local news, or the world news, I should say, and we had um, different uh, views. You know, of course, everything is red and blue. It's Democrat and uh, Republican. However, of course, you got the conservatives that feel that uh, it's, it's more about mental health. And uh, then you have uh, the Democrats that feel it's more about gun control. Well, I think it's a little bit of both. You know, so we have to figure out collectively what can we do, because eventually it's about the safety of our children and it's about uh, the safety of the staff. Now, I've been asked a question and this has been coming back and forth about uh, teachers having guns. Well, I am a former DPS teacher. I have two sisters that are teachers. And I feel that teachers should be teachers. When you go to school to be a teacher, that's your passion, to help children to learn. I don't think that you should be forced to bear arms. Now, there's a lot of things that can happen in a situation like that with a teacher or a staff that has a gun. Say, for instance, something like this that happened in Florida uh, were to happen again, God forbid, and a teacher had a gun. You never know how someone is going to react in a situation when, when they might freeze up, they might panic. I can only imagine the emotions they're going through, especially if they ex experience some of their, sh their children or their students dying in front of them. So if that were to happen, uh, the first thing that the military or the police ask you is if you have a weapon. So if they can't speak at that time, they, ha they can risk their life of being killed because they froze or they didn't say anything. So it's important that we look at all the possibilities, and I don't think that might be the answer. Now, I was also told by a military friend of mine that retired from uh, the Navy, um, uh, Ronnie Bonner. Hi, Ronnie. And we talked about this issue because when I notice something is going on in our country, I try to talk about professionals in that area, talk about the issue to professionals to get their point of view. Because I am planning an exit strategy for my son, and that's what you should do for your children. Your children need to be aware of, of their surroundings anywhere they go, you know, home, school, anywhere. So uh, with talking to my friend Ronnie, I... Uh, realize and I got some tips on what my son could do in the event that there is a school shooting at his school. What, uh, what Ronnie suggested to me is if the shooter is within 20 feet of you, then all you can do is take cover and try to hide um, under a desk or try to hide under some furniture and get as far away from the shooter as you can and uh, conceal yourself and take cover. Now, if the shooter is, you know, on the other side of the building or further away, you might have more options, but you need to always find an exit wherever you are. So I've been cautious and I want to know where I can go in the event that uh, something like this happens at a restaurant, for instance, me and my husband, my family are all to dinner. I need to sit myself. Don't be afraid to tell the waitress or the, the hostess. I don't, I'm not, I, I don't want this seat. I want to sit somewhere closer to an exit or, you know, you just need to be observant of your surroundings. And that's very important. So, um, I want to say to you, we need to have a conversation with our kids today. It is very important that you communicate with your child. I don't care how old they are. You know, you need to talk with your children and let them know this is a real issue that we are facing. It doesn't have anything to do with anyone's mental capacity or their lack of. It has something to do with you being safe. We don't know why these people do things that they do. People have been doing horrific crimes before I was born and definitely I'm sure before you were and anyone else that's living now. So this is not a new thing. But what we need to do is prepare ourselves in the event that it might happen to us. And uh, the only thing that I can think is taking cover and praying. And I was talking to this, uh, talking about this subject to friends and faculty here and one thing I noticed is that when I was in school, we had prayer. When I was in school, we pledged allegiance to the flag. Regardless if I knew what that meant, I participated. And it kept me 
more, more humble, more aware of my morals and values. And when Jesus left the school system, it seems like the morals left w with him. And um, I encourage you all. I don't know what your religion is, but I know that I uh, give honor to Jesus, who is the head of my life. And I pray with my son. And I would encourage you to do the same. When your children leave your home, you need to pray. Since they don't allow you to do it in school, do it at home. And you get on your knees or whatever way you choose to do it. And you ask God to cover your child from the top of their head to the sole of their feet. Because the devil is indeed busy. And he is waiting for an opportunity. And you don't need to give him one. So you need to stay in prayer. Because that's really the only armor we have against something like this is prayer. And so I tell my son, look for the exits. Don't try to help anybody. You can't be a hero. If somebody comes your way and you're able to help them, fine. But do not go out your way. It is important that you come home to me and your father. It, that is what is important to me. Not saving anyone. So I have let him know to look at the exits. When you go to school, find out where you are. What's the best way that I can get out of here if I need to? And then when I do get there, what should I do then? Because when you have uh, the answers to these questions, they'll help you more. So it's important that um, we guide our children, let them know. I've asked my son, what protocol do they have for you in school? And I was very surprised that he knew. He said it's a lockdown procedure that they have in place. And what that means is in the event that something were hap to happen in a school, they would have a drill or a, uh, like a fire bell, and they would tell everyone to stay in the classroom. But what if the killer is in his class? And he didn't know what to say. So I had to tell him, get down. I said, when you play your video games, because a lot of these kids play video games, which I think has a lot to do with this gun uh, and uh, assault rifle situation. Um, I said, do you shoot anyone that's on the ground? And he says, no, I shoot at moving targets. And that's my point exactly. So that's why when Ronnie gave me that advice, that was some good advice to get down low and take cover. So that is something that you need to talk to your children about and guide them on situations, um, what they should do. So we need to have that conversation um, because it's possible it could happen, and we don't want it to. So the main thing that we have is education of our children, telling them what to do in the event that something like this may happen. And then you want to... Uh, to, you want to, of course, talk to your children about, you know, this situation and what to do in the event that this happens. And it's important that you give your child the resources. If it does happen, what do I do next? So a lot of people freeze up and they don't know what to do. So we need to give them this advice on what to do. Don't try to be the hero and take down the gunman. That's not your job. You are, your job is to get home safe. So that's important. Another thing, if you hear something or if you see something, some erratic behavior from a student, and uh, I'm not just talking about old school bullying at this point. I'm talking about someone threatening your life, someone saying that they're going to shoot up a school, someone saying that they're going to kill themselves. Any of that behavior needs to be reported to proper authority. Then it needs to be told to your parents as well. If a direct threat is given to your child, you need to take that seriously and you need to contact the school and the proper authorities and follow up on that. You know, um, I've had that situation. My, my son goes to a school where it's not very culturally diverse and he is the minority. I, I mean, uh, maybe 4% of his class is Afri of his school is African American. So I have been involved in situations like that where he has been a target of um, racial discrimination. And I've had to follow up and follow up and follow up. Because it's important that we, uh, when something like this is brought to our attention, that not only we show that our kids that we care, we're fighting for them, and that that is not tolerated. That behavior is not tolerated. Another thing is mental health issues. I know that's been a lot of uh, 
uh, the target uh, with uh, politics now. We need to do something about mental health. That's part of the component, too, definitely. A lot of people that used to be in the, the hospital, uh, Eloise, uh, Northville, these people are out in the street. These people used to take medication every day. Now they take nothing. It's not being supervised or anything. We need to do something about that. And that is on a legislative uh, level. So we need to do something in Congress. We need to do something in the House. We need to pass laws. We need to build hospitals for mental health. I got all the answers on what we need to do. But we need to vote for these things when, 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 they, be, when they come up. We need to be proactive and try to do something about it. Now we've seen the effects of not having a strong mental health system in this country. And it hasn't been good. So it's something that we need to, uh, to, to work on. That's why it's important that we vote on these issues. We vote for judges. And we vote not just for president. We vote for congressmen. We vote for state representatives. We vote for all of these people. And they work for us. We are their, their employers, the people. So it is important, important that we get people in office that agrees with our political views. If you don't agree with the Second Amendment, then you should not be voting for someone that is supported by the NRA. Um, the NRA is uh, the National Rifle Association, and they spoke at a forum with these children uh, from Florida, the victims of the Florida shooting. And uh, I watched the forum yesterday. They had a representative from the NRA there. They also had Marco Rubio and a, a couple of other senators from and, uh, and a congressman, I believe, from uh, Florida. Very interesting. I believe that the forum was probably too soon. Um, yesterday was a week since the shooting. So you got a lot of bitterness and you got a lot of anger. But the power of those children, I believe that it will make a change or at least bring the attention, you know, to uh, these issues that are so important to us. However, it's so much more than just what happened in Florida. The NRA supports a lot of political individuals and they have a lot of money a lot of guns and a sight a right uh, assault rifles are are manufactured in Florida so this is the part that you don't hear about so you got assault rifles making billions and trillions of dollars in this country but then you got 17 individuals that were affected by these guns so it's it's you know it's very hard even from Marco Rubio that was asked a question by one of the students that, that I don't think he understands but he's like you know well would you make a commitment to not accept any money from the NRA and I understand Senator Rubio's position where he was like you know I can't make that commitment you know he said you know he is uh selling his idea of politics and you know whoever supports it. a lot of time we don't even know our supporters when you're in a position like that and um, of course all money is not good money but I can understand if, if this um, organization which is not all bad if you if you look at the National Rifle Association they don't just have a bad history this is an organization that uh, you know stems from our Second Amendment right to bear arms which I, I believe in. However, I think that it's so much more than just guns. It's, like I said, mental health. It's safety. It's, you know, counseling. If this kid, after these, you know, 39 times or during these 39 times that the, you know, police were called in, in a short period of time and having issues with his family, if he could have talked to someone, because obviously he was seeking something that no one could give him. But if he had a counselor or a psychiatrist or a psychologist that he could talk to, maybe things would have been better. Who knows? Um, but something has to be done. So what I want you guys to do today, if you do nothing 
ever is to talk to your children. Talk to them about the safety in the schools. Talk to them about an exit plan, where they should go in the event that a tragedy uh, happens. And, you know, get their ducks in a row. We need to have a plan. If you don't have a plan, then you plan to fail. And unfortunately, the world has come to this. We have to figure out when we go into a movie theater, where is the exits? You know, they tell you where the exits are for a reason in, in the event uh, of an emergency. You know, um, you know me, I, I'm considering, okay, well, you know, I got my home protected, but maybe I should bring some mace in, in a situation like that. Any kind of deterrent. I was also asked, well, what do I think that, you know, should be done in the schools? So I was thinking back to what my friend Ronnie had said, uh, the, the um, retired Navy man. And he said, you know, one thing you can do in the event that uh, you are attacked by someone or you have a gunman is take one of their senses and, you know, their sense of sight. Okay, so if you can't see it's, and your visibility is off, then you can't aim at a target so I was thinking maybe if they had you know at first I was thinking tear gas he said no tear gas can be harmful and even kill people so I'm thinking well you know how you uh, have a stage performance and you see that smoke maybe if we had an emergency system that can smoke up the room so they wouldn't be able to see a target that could deter them because this event happened in three to four minutes with this killing and he let off 150 shots in that time. So it takes uh, first responders about five to eight minutes uh, to get to the location. So that's, that's about three to four minutes too late. So I think any kind of deterrent could have bought time and maybe less casualties. I'm not saying everyone would be saved, but, you know, that might be a deterrent, you know, to disable the sight you know of the perpetrator so I, I I really don't have the answers that's why I'm asking you all to call in to email me and um, it's time for a change this country um, was built on growth and change we have changed since Columbus sailed the ocean blue in 1492 this country has changed it has remained strong but there's always been weak spots where we can improve from I mean I mean we have terrorist attacks we have all of these things that go on in our country but one thing that they cannot take from you is the right and the power to stay ready because if you stay ready you do not have to get ready and that's what we need to do we need to stay ready in case someone tries uh, to harm our family because I would die for mine and I, I'm sure that you will do the same I would die for my students when when I was teaching so it's important that we figure out what we as American citizens can do to protect our children anything else we can deal with but when it comes to our babies we need to figure out what we can do and it's important that we uh, develop exit strategies we uh, talk to our, our uh, congressmen and figure out what we can do uh, to pass laws to help with uh, the school violence because it has to stop um, it's important for you to to vote not just uh, vote for your president that's important too but we have uh, we have judges that we have to vote for we need to look at what their views are if their views are not in line with where you're trying to go in the the direction that you want this country to go do not vote for them voting is a privilege and it is a privilege that we should uphold and we should utilize because you cannot complain you cannot say anything about guns in America if you voted for someone that is supported by the NRA or that uh, believes in uh, assault rifles. Because if you even see the, the ban for assault rifles, it, ab it bans about 2,000 guns that are assault rifles. And, but then there's 2,000 duplicates of those same guns out there. So 
you're voting against something that really is kind of like obsolete because right when, you know, it's, it's over, you know, when, when, okay, we, we're not going to have these 2000 guns. We got 2000 duplicates just like it. So that's important. Stay tuned. We're going to have attorneys are us. Uh, it's on next with uh, myself and attorney Thomas Quartz. We're here every week. Now, next week, don't forget, it's going to be the debut for the real talk with Helen. And uh, we'll see you in a minute with Attorneys R Us. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please email me at thewellnessreport at yahoo.com. Thanks for watching the Wellness Report with Helen. Have a good day.